Until June 1st, Evil Tal is available in the raid scene in Pokemon Go, and unlike Xerneas, Evil Tal is actually good in both raids and in PvP. So you may want to raid some of these things up, stock up on that candy, maybe get some good IV spreads. So in this video, I'm going to cover the best counters to the Evil Tal raid, give you some tips to help you out on the Evil Tal duo and trio if you're interested in that, and I'll also demystify let you know who the best Mega is for the Evil Tall raid, helping you clean up your raid game. If you are curious about just how good Evil Tall is in raids and PvP, I already did a video on that, so link up above and in the description if you want to find out just how good Evil Tall is. At any rate, let's get into the raid. Here we have the meme infographic from the Game Press crew. If you want to ogle this yourself, save it and share it. Link in the description to this infographic here. And this covers the basics of the Evil Tall raid. You know, it's a flying dark type Pokemon, so it's weak to electric, rock, ice, and fairy. Uh, the better counters overall are going to be the electric and the rock type Pokemon. The fairy types are nice because they can be a little bit extra tanky for this raid and can get like a common weather bonus there. The ice types do feel a little bit too much on the glassy side, but if you got them powered up and you don't have a whole lot of the other options powered up, then the ice types, they're not too shabby here. Then when it comes to the catch CP, this thing is good in raids and in PvP, especially the Master League PvP. So you will want to keep your eyes peeled for that 2160 right there. However, Evil Tal also has some swag in the Ultra League, so you may want to look out for the 2128. The 2128 is the 111515, which is the rank 1 raid caught Evil Tal for Ultra League PvP. Now, of course, if you trade with friends, you could get a better IV split for PvP there, but the difference between this Evil Tal the 11, 15, 15, and you know, the best ones that you can get from a best friend trade or an ultra friend trade or a great friend trade, uh, it's really not that big of a difference there. Uh, in most cases, you're not even getting that big of a gain in defense and HP. So at the end of the day, I feel like that 21, 28, you know, the 11, 15, 15, that's, that's basically as good as it gets. You can save yourself from Stardust and just stop right there with the Evil Tal. So just a little, little extra swag tip for you. And with this simple stuff out of the way, let's get in to the raid graph. Here I graphed out the best counters to the Evil Tall raid using level 40 counters unless stated otherwise against the tier 5 Evil Tall raid all of its movesets averaged with no dodging and with best friendship using simulations here from pokebattler.com slash raids. Now if you're not too familiar with my raid graphs here, the Y axis here is DPS, damage per second, so basically how quickly you can take down this raid boss, and the higher up the Pokemon is on this graph, the better its DPS is going to be. To further validate this DPS, I do have a duo DPS cutoff line, so if your Pokemon are above that cutoff line, that means that you and a trainer of equal or greater power do have the potential to do the duo for the Evil Tal raid. If you're below that line and you've got level 40 or otherwise stated levels of these Pokemon, uh, then you're pretty good for the trio. If you're curious about trio DPS, the theoretical cutoff for trio DPS is about like 17 to 18. This graph starts at 22, so all the featured Pokemon here are eligible for a Evil Tall trio. Then the X axis we have here is TDO, total damage output, basically the percent of damage a Pokemon should deal on average to Evil Tall before they go down. You can think of it as a more useful metric for tankiness. And then to validate this tankiness a bit more, I do have a double relobby avoid TDO cutoff line. This means that if you're going for the duo attempt and your Pokemon are to the right of this line, then that increases your potential to avoid having to relobby twice. If you don't relobby quickly, that's a really big drop in your DPS because you're doing no damage when you're relobbying, so it definitely pays off to avoid having to relobby in these raids. So if you want a simple way to think about it, the more up and the more to the right your Pokemon is, the better it's going to be in the Evil Tall raid. Now, aside from the weather boosted options here, the best overall options for the Evil Tall raid are going to be that Rock Wrecker Hyperior, the Zekrom, the Shadow Thundershock Zapdos, and then on top, finger in the air, we have the Shadow Raikou. Now, if you are curious about the Thundershock Shadow Zapdos here, Thundershock is an event exclusive move, so you do have to Elite TM to get this move. So if you are using Charge Beam Zapdos, your performance is more on the level of like Thunderous Therian form here. So uh, it kind of hurts a bit, you know? So if you don't have the Thundershock, then I guess Zapdos isn't as optimal as the other options are. Um, and then Raikou here is a shadow option, so that is a little tricky to power up too. But Zekrom, Zekrom's good in Master League, man. So maxing this guy out, 
definitely a good investment. And then Rock Wrecker Hyperior, even though it is below the Duo DPS cutoff line, because it is so tanky and because its DPS is close enough to the duo dps cutoff line it could help you ride out a duo if you are using these more fragile options by helping you avoid having to relobby again so rock record period definitely should not be counted out and if you aren't going for the duo then I don't see anything wrong with Rock Wrecker Hyperior here. I do have a level 43 XL breakpoint for Rock Wrecker Hyperior here for you. Uh, it is level 43 though, so if you do pump it up with the XL candy, that will make it ineligible for the Master League Classic. Hyperior is a good Pokemon in the Master League Classic, so just, just keep that in mind. You know, maybe you're good just staying at level 40 here. And if you are a more frugal trainer, you don't have all this Stardust and candy to spend on everything, uh, level 36 is a breakpoint on the uh, SmackDown there for Hyperior, it's effectively as good as level 40, so this is a pretty good budget option for you. Now, outside of the topmost options here, you can see that we do have some other shadows like riding or being just above the duo DPS cutoff line, and I feel like these guys are a little bit flaky when it comes to the duo because it is so easy to just knock them out. And if you aren't going for the duo, I feel like the non-shadow variants of these Pokemon might be a little bit more reliable for you because they can actually tank a hit. Of course, if you're not going for the duo, anything else featured here on this graph is going to be really good. And then I also have partly cloudy weather counters highlighted here. I didn't highlight the rainy weather ones because if it's not a shadow, then their DPS value is going to be at the level of the shadow, and then they're going to be a bit tankier, so you can kind of like mentally visualize what the rainy boosted Pokemon look like. And I didn't want to stretch out my graph even more and make it even harder to read by putting rainy boosted shadow Pokemon. They're already making the duo, so as you can imagine, they're going to be even better with a rainy weather boost. And then I didn't include the cloudy weather bonus for these two fairy types because they're obviously going to be better and they're not making the duo, so clearly in cloud weather these fairy types are going to be a bit better but yeah when it comes to the partly cloudy options you can see that rampardos takes its position as the highest dps option still a bit of a glass cannon there um, and not featured here on the graph but there is a level 37.5 breakpoint for it that is effectively on the level of 40. It does perfectly overlap. I didn't include the number here on the graph because I didn't want to confuse people. But yeah, level 37.5 is as good as level 40 on Rampardos. By the way, if you are curious about these other kind of budget breakpoints or maybe even bulk points, you know, the level of cutoff where your Pokemon can survive charge moves on average in a raid, I do go over more of that in the article on Game Press for this raid. So link in the description if you want to pour over those details or if you just want to check out this graph without re-watching this video or taking a screenshot that's down there too link in the description at any rate rampardos looking like a boss and i believe it also has a level 43 breakpoint as well if you want to excel it and take its dps even higher and then over here you can see rock wrecker hyperior still being a boss if you don't have rock wrecker and you do have the stone edge the boosted stone edge hyperior is like only as good as the non-boosted rock wrecker hyperior so you definitely do want to have rock wrecker on your hyperiors for this raid but if you don't have a whole lot of optimized options there's absolutely nothing wrong with the stone edge hyperior just make sure you have smackdown too and then over here we do have the Tyranitars. And Tyranitar and Shadow Tyranitar are, are really interesting Pokemon for this raid as like Omega tanks. Because if this thing does not have Focus Blast, every single hit it does have is resisted by Tyranitar. You know, normal type attacks, Hyper Beam, resisted. Hurricane, resisted. Psychic, double resisted. Dark Pulse, obviously resisted. So if it's not Pack and Focus Blast, uh, the tankiness of these Tyranitars do go up to like an insano level. Here I have all movesets averaged, so the Focus Blast is in the pool for this particular graph. Uh, but yeah, if you cut it out, their TDO just like goes off the charts. It's pretty insane. Uh, so if you do have a Smackdown Tyranitar already pumped up, or a Smackdown Shadow Tyranitar, which is kind of rare there because you have to Elite TM it, or you have to evolve you know, Shadow Larvitar at like the right time uh, when they have like the event going on so you can get that attack again. Um, but yeah, if you do have that and you know you're not up against Focus Blast, definitely a high value tank for this particular raid. And if you don't have all these high end options, or you're not a level 40 trainer, so you don't have them pumped up to level 40 and all that, uh, you can see there are some pretty good cutoffs for some of these more common Pokemon. And then on top of that, at the end of the day, as long as you're bringing stuff with effective hits, you know, like electric, rock, fairy, um, ice type damage to this raid, and there's like more than five people there, you're probably going to beat Evil Tall at the end of the day, so don't sweat it too much. 
But if you are big into optimization and you want to beat that raid boss faster so you can get even more balls so you can make sure that you catch that, you know, that hundo or that 2128 when it appears so it doesn't run away on you and make you cry. Uh, well, this is how you pump those numbers up. Another thing you may be interested in for optimization purposes as well is uh, Mega Manetric here versus Mega Amphros. This simple graph would lead you to believe that Mega Manetric is better than Mega Amphros because it does have that higher personal DPS. It has about two higher personal DPS here. But Mega Amphros does survive longer in the raid than Mega Manetric does. It has the higher TDO, which means that it will be giving its Mega Bonus and its Mega Same Type Bonus to its allies for a longer time than Mega Manetric will, which could make the difference in DPS. Now, trying to think about this theoretically, you know, it, it's difficult to mentally visualize how much of a difference that could be. But of course, the Swagman here, graphed it out for you, making it simple. And here you go. We have the Mega Influence on Team DPS featuring these two Electric type Pokemon against the Tier 5 Evil Tall Raid using all of Evil Tal's movesets average with no dodging. And uh, x-axis, number of players, obviously you have to start with two players to do this raid. And then we have average team DPS. Now I could do like stacking team DPS, you know, but that'd be a bit harder to visualize. So basically it's the overall DPS of you and your allies and then divided by the amount of allies that you have to get the average DPS to make it easier to visualize the difference between Mega Manetric and uh, Mega Amphros's influence on this particular raid. And it appears that as long as you have more than three or four trainers in the raid, Mega Amphros is beating out Mega Manetric here in the Evil Tall raid for its performance. Their DPS only a difference of two, so not that great to begin with. And it looks like the uh, six to eight seconds of survival time that Amphros has over the Mega Manetric does make the difference in performance uh, just because, you know, it's boosting its allies. And that extra, you know, boost to the allies pumps up the team damage even higher. So even though Amphros doesn't have that higher personal DPS, because it's boosting its allies DPS for a longer period of time, you will be able to take down the raid boss even more quickly if you're using Mega Amphros. Now, if you're curious about the difference between these two lines here, like the checkered lines and the uh, not checkered lines, uh, it's just difference in baseline DPS. So these ones use Raikou as baseline DPS. So your allies are using Raikou, you're gonna be mega boosting Raikou for a bit, and then when these guys go down, you're gonna be using Raikou. This one is using Rhyperior instead. I wanted to compare the difference between, you know, the differences of their baseline DPS and the difference between the bonuses because the electric type Pokemon Raikou is gonna get the mega same type bonus where the Rhyperior is only gonna get the baseline mega bonus. And it seems like the less of a bonus that you're giving or the less optimized uh, your allies are, it looks like the smaller the difference between these two Pokemon are gonna be. But at the end of the day, Amphros is on top. Another thing I want to highlight for you guys is that these are pretty minor differences between these two Pokemon. Uh, here I'm honed in on, you know, 26.2 to 27 average DPS. So like the difference between this and that is like a tenth of a DPS. The difference between this and this is like a quarter of DPS, which really doesn't feel like a whole lot in practice depending on the charge move timing of yourself and the raid boss you know that could easily make the difference in the dps here to begin with uh, so it is kind of split in hairs between these two electric type pokemon but when it comes to splitting the hairs here it seems like the pokemon with the gorgeous mane seems to be the better mega overall as an electric type raid attacker. So if you were counting out Mega Amphros before, you saw its performance on PV Poke, you saw its performance on my graph there and you're like, yeah, Mega Amphros, that thing's garbage. Turns out Mega Amphros is often better. And seeing that more optimized teams get a benefit out of the Mega Amphros sooner, it could be the better Mega option for a trio attempt. So what does this all mean for the average everyday raider? Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, I'd say just use whichever one you already have powered up or already have mega energy for and you'll probably be fine. But if you are looking to pump up that volume, get a little bit more out of it, uh, it does look like Mega Amphros is going to be slightly better than the Mega Manetric in practice. Uh, you know, just as long as you got like at least four people in the raid. Now, if you are curious, this type of situation does exist for all sorts of Mega Pokemon. And I already did an analysis comparing Mega Altaria to Mega Rayquaza and Mega Garchomp. And if you were counting Mega Altaria out before, uh, you will be surprised by the results. So link up above 
and in the description to that video if you want to see how Mega Altaria compares as a raid supporter compared to the other Mega Dragons. And there you have it, the best counters and the best Mega for the Evil Tall raid. If you want to review any of this information or you want some additional information beyond just this video, once again, link in the description to my article on GamePress, which covers all of this information and more, and it also talks about how good uh, Evil Tall is in the raid and PvP metas. And of course, if you want a video on Evil Tall's performance in raids and PvP, I already did that video, so link in the description to that as well. Uh, yeah, Evil Tall. If you got any questions on this content, comment below, let me know what's up, and I'll be happy to help you out. And if you enjoyed this video, you want to see more like it, make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips. I'd also like to give a special shout out to these patron supporters. If you want to support Swagman on Patreon, link in the description. So I've been getting some flack from people for how I say evil tall. They're telling me it's pronounced Evetil? Evet? Yo, I know Evet's your ex man, but that doesn't make her the god of death and destruction. You gotta get over it, man. It's evil tall. Evil tall.